My name is Pierre Coupe. I'm a painter, printmaker. I have been a writer. I've been an editor. But uh, my primary discipline is painting, of course. The piece that uh, Gallery Jones chose to include in the Art Toronto segment of the uh, exhibitions that are on now in October and November, I have a concurrent uh, show, solo show called Walking the Cat Back that is in the main space of the gallery now. But this piece is White Painting One, and it's quite a bit different from the pieces in the uh, solo show. And it's one of those paintings that uh, uh, is really outside of the groups and series or clusters as I call them, that I have as my main focus. Every now and then there's a painting that sort of squeaks out of the mold. This painting though started in 2016 and was finished in 2019. So that's a, like a two year span of working on it on and off. And it's one of those pieces that uh, baffles you because you're not quite sure where you're going with it over that long period of time. And yet you know that there's something there that you have to stick with whether you like it or not. And you come to moments in the uh, series of actual painting sessions that you despair. You think, well, this is a total failure completely and you're never gonna get this painting. You might as well strip it off the canvas, burn it, throw it away. And it reminds you again and again of Samuel Beckett's great statement, fail, fail again, fail better. In this particular piece, I used a different kind of white pigment uh, which simultaneously was able to give me transparency and opacity and texture. And I could even dig into it and uh, with chopsticks or whatever, my hand, whatever, the end of the paintbrush. And to uh, get a, more, a kind of a varied surface that you don't find in my usual series of paintings. Hello, I'm Faye Disbro. I'm an interdisciplinary artist in Vancouver. We're here at Gallery Jones's Art Toronto booth 2020 on Halloween day. And I have beside me this work entitled At the Edge of Cities and a light box called Visceral Dreams. And this, these pieces were from my recent solo exhibition here called Catalog of Stitches. Primarily the works were textile based and they were an uh, investigation of materiality, texture, labor, and my interest in certain forms like portals. I'm interested in how new meanings are assigned to materials and textures once they've been reconfigured. And a piece like the light box also does that reconfiguring of multiple viewpoints of a sculpture that I did based on white collar dress shirts and quilting them, so feminizing the, mas the masculine, traditionally masculine white collar dress shirt. And these broadcloth assemblages are floating in a, a light box. This is Shane from Gallery Jones. Also featured in our booth is the work of James Nizam. James is currently an artist in residence at the Bethanian Institute in Berlin. And this is a piece of his from the series Drawings with Starlight. Here's James with some words about the series. For this series of photographs entitled Drawing with Starlight, I've built a camera that allows me to do exactly that, to draw with the light of the stars. The camera uses a very simple photographic effect, an in-camera photographic effect called a zoom burst. And essentially with a zoom burst, you leave the aperture open and you zoom in or out on your subject matter to essentially extrude it into a tracer. With the Drawing with Starlight series, I'm essentially doing this with star trails. I'm letting exposures of the night sky draw themselves out as star trails and using very um, specific time signatures and zoom modulations, um, extrude or stitch it into a figure. When every star in my frame works in concert with that zoom modulation, um, I get these really beautiful tapestries that I can't predict. Starlight is interesting to me because I feel like it's encoded 
with so much information. One thought that comes to mind is that starlight is inherently about ancient time. It's about these galactic scales and distances that light is traveling from. And so in some strange way, it is a record of time. I think it's interesting then to think about starlight as in as as being a source of time and then to take this source of light and script it or write with it to create drawings that are about seeing time or making time visible in a photographic way. My name is Birte Piontek. I'm a photo-based visual artist. I'm originally from Germany and live in Vancouver where I also teach as an assistant professor in the photo department at Emily Carr University. I did a project called Abendlied, which won the Bert Batinsky Award in 2018 and was published and made it onto the Times uh, Best Photo Books of 2019. Gallery Jones has chosen two pieces from my series Janice to show at Art Toronto this year. Um, it's a larger series that uh, roughly has about 35 images. So all the images are taken in the same corner of my studio, um, thinking about domestic uh, space, our relationship uh, with, a, with a space, and how we can find inspiration in a restricted environment. The work um, also talks about the relationship we have with the natural world with objects that we find in the natural world, like uh, inspired by traditional still life, um, the still life genre. So it's like a lot of fruit, vegetables, plants, flowers that are in conversation with my body to talk a bit about um, topics of change, the relationship we have to all organic matter. Hi, my name is Brendan Lee Satesh Tang, and I am a visual artist based here in Vancouver, British Columbia. So here at the Art Toronto booth 2020, uh, I have some of my Mango Ormolu series on display. This is the most recent work, and it belongs to the Mango Ormolu version 5-Y. And Y is uh, how many letters or iterations, so we're right at the end of the series. Um, in this particular work, I have the ceramic uh, and robotic uh, elements sort of working together. In a lot of ways, it almost looks like the ceramic element is uh, almost lifting uh, its shirt up or it's like it's coming off of it and the robotic part is emerging from it. Um, so this is one of the elements of that series. So the Mango Ormolu series really started out of my research within the ceramic history. And I came across some images of what is called Ormolu. And what had happened in the, you know, the 1800s and earlier is European, uh, French and German would import porcelains from China. And then to make it more relevant to their own culture, they would put a lot of gold filigree all around the base and on the lip and on the shoulder of the objects. And they became curiosity objects uh, for the bourgeoisie. I was really interested in those ideas of cultural appropriation and hybridity of forms. And so what I did is I conceptually removed that gold filigree and I replaced it with these robotic elements that you see here. Things that I grew up with, with Transformers and the latest science fiction movies that were coming out. And I replaced them and then the work really took a shift and it started talking more about our relationship with our technology, how we mediate our histories, our cultural histories through our technology, and also how our identity is also in flux. This is Shane again. Also featured in our booth is the work of Michael Nicol Yagulanis. This is a brief commentary on a painting called Maintaining. The paper is a slightly enlarged reproduction of the stationery used by the American Museum of Natural History in the 1900s. At that time, a preeminent member of the anthropological community and of the American Museum of Natural History by the name of Franz Boas was traveling along the west coast of Canada. He traveled with some of the stationery. And my great-great-grandfather, Charles Edenshaw, Dahagen, 
became a friend of Franz Boas's. And Charles painted these beautiful little drawings on the stationery and gave it to Franz as a gift. When I was a young man, I saw an artist in residence at the American Museum of Natural History. And there I saw these drawings, these drawings that my great-great-grandfather had gifted to Franz Boas. And I thought, it's really important to exchange gifts, to maintain relationships between individuals that cut across ethnicities. Kind of friendships are really worth nourishing. So the museum reprinted the stationery from the 1900s. I think they reprinted probably about six sheets. And I did a lovely little drawing in one of them and gave it to them. It's in their collection now. Maintaining is also part of that series. And it deals with that moment in time when a shipload of seasick, scurvy-ridden sailors lost at sea stumbled into Haida Gwaii. The question is, what are the kind of relationships we want to exist between people of different ethnicities? And how do we maintain the better qualities of such relationships?